Hey, yo, what is up? Hey, yo, what is up, guys? Today we got another leak code question number 1558. Minimum number of function calls to make target array. I literally just finished this question and I don't want to do this, but I'm going to explain the question really nicely and you'll fully understand the answer really quickly. So we have this function, okay? And our task is to form an inter integer array nums from an initial array of zeros array that is the same size as nums. Return the minim minimum number of function calls to make nums from array. The answer is guaranteed to fit into a 32-bit signed integer. So if you're here already, you obviously read the question already, so I, I don't like explaining it uh, too much. But basically, um, we have this, uh, we're, we're basically going to act like we're starting from an array with just zero. So zero, zero, zero. Let's say it was of size three. And we're given a target array, and let's use this example that I worked with, which is two, five, right? Four, two, five. And we need to perform a set of operations to get from this to this. And we can only get do two operations. One is we can multiply all the numbers by two, and two, um, like right there. We can increment a single um, index or a number, or whatever you want to call it, by one, okay? And so basically we're gonna have to work backwards, so we can either do like zero, zero, one, and then multiply by two, so we get something like zero, zero, two, and that's that. But, um, so when you're doing this kind of problem, you have to think of it like this. We're starting with zero, zero, okay? And we're trying to reach a goal, which is four, two, five. When we're going from one place to the next, you can always, you can either go from your starting to your goal, right? And then kind of work that way. Or you can try to, if you know your goal already, you can start from your goal and work backwards. And sometimes it's a lot easier. And in this case, it's a lot easier because every answer will have a standardized goal, which is an array of all zeros, right? An array of all zeros. So this is our original um, uh, array, sorry, zero, zero, zero. And we're trying to get to four, two, five. But instead we can think of it a little differently. We're trying to get, we were given an array of nums and we want to turn this into all zeros. Think of it like that. And depending on how quickly we can take this to this, um, that will be our answer. So we just want to we just want to work backwards. And the way we're going to approach it is kind of like this. So let's say we had this number four two five, and we want to get it quickly down to zero. Okay. Well, if you played around with some examples, you'll notice that um, it has to do uh, with even and odd numbers. Okay. Because let's say we had one and we divided one by by a two, we could either end up with um, zero or with um, or uh, one we could have started from zero or one and see that's a problem we don't know which one is going to be which or let's say we were but basically let's say you're right dividing three by two that would that wouldn't work because you know now you can't you couldn't have come from 1.5 right that's that's not possible so we know that if we were, we're at, if we we notice that if we're in at if we notice that if we are at an odd number that means we can only have come from it by adding one, meaning it was originally two and we added one. Okay. And if we, if we were at an even number, then we came from it by dividing by two. Okay. That's kind of how you want to think of it. So that's one thing to notice that if we were an odd number, right? The only way we could have came to that odd number, reached that odd number is if we added one to an even number. Now, so let's just try to work backwards and now you'll kind of understand that. So now, let's say we had four, two, four. Well, we want to start bringing it down. Well, we see that they're all odd, they're all even. So let's just divide everything by two. That'll give us one operation and that will quickly decrement all our numbers. So four, two, four will turn into two, one, two, and we'll do one operation on it. Yeah, sorry. So we have four, two, five, and then we, we see that one of these numbers has, one of these numbers is odd. So we'll subtract one. So we'll end up with four, two, five. As you can see, we added one operation and previous had all odd, so subtract one. Now this is a little weird the way I wrote it, but whatever. And then, so from here, right, we can, we see that they're all even, so let's divide by two. So that's how we got here. So previous one was all even, so we divided by two. That was another operation. Then we see, now we see one odd number, right? And so now we're gonna subtract one. So we get two, zero, two. Now we see they're all even, so we'll divide by two. We see one, zero, one. So then we see that one of them is odd, so we'll subtract one. We'll move that, we'll subtract from that one. Now we get zero, zero, one. We see another one is odd. Once again, we subtract, and then we end up with all zeros. And that's kind of how you want to approach it. But the problem is now, and that's why some people came up with one-liner solutions. Uh, if you see someone came up with one-liner solutions, because you can do it that way if you have function calls. 
like a reduce or something that will apply to the whole entire um, array at once. But uh, I don't only really think that's that's what the uh, interviewers are looking for. But that is really cool. So I like seeing that. But um, uh, I don't think you can do that in Java. Maybe you can do that with Java with some lambda functions. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. So, but we can't really iterate like that in the code in Java. So what we're going to do instead is we're gonna we're gonna start decrementing each number one by one. Okay. So we're gonna go to four and we're gonna take four all the way down to zero. Then we're gonna go to two. Sorry, the two right here, and we're gonna take that all the way down to zero. And we're gonna go to five and we're gonna take that all the way down to zero. So we're either gonna divide by two or subtract by one. We're gonna divide by two, subtract by one. Now. Every time we subtract by one, we have to increment our count, right? Because that's one single operation. But when we divide it by two, right? If we divide it by two, that will apply to the whole array, right? That will apply to the whole array. So we need to keep track of how many times we divided by two already, okay? So basically our maximum number of divides by two that we had previously. So let's say over here, we divided by two to get four, we divided by two, so we do four. Divide, divide by two and you'll end up with two. Divide by two, you end up with one. You subtract one and end up with zero. Then when you're working at two, you divide by two, you can't increment the counter again. You can't say that's another full operation because we already divided the whole array by two in this previous operation, right? That's something you need to notice. We already divided by two in that previous operation, okay? So we're gonna divide by two, we with one, then we subtract one, we end up with zero. So that's, that's basically the gist of it. We can't really iterate like that in code, so instead we iterate through the numbers, and for each one we divide by two and subtract by one each time. If we divide, we only increase the count if it's greater. If we subtract, we increase the count every single time. Once the number hits zero, we can stop here. So this is the code. So we're gonna work backwards. We have a count of zero, and basically this is our current divides. How many times have we currently divided this number by zero, by two, and you'll see that. And this gets reset at every iteration right here. We'll, we'll get to that in a second. And this is our maximum number of divides. The most number has been divided by two. Basically, is dependent on the largest number in the array. Um, uh, and then, so now we're iterating through all the numbers. For every time we iterate, we hit a new number. We're gonna reset to zero. Get our current number. And then, while that our current number is still greater than zero, if it's an even number, as we mentioned, we're gonna divide by zero. We're gonna divide by two and we increment uh, the current divides, not our count, our current divides. And then we check if our current divides is more than the maximum number of divides we already had, right? Then what are we gonna do? Well, we're just going to, um, well, let's say it's not. If it's not, then we can't increment our count. We don't reset really our maximum number of divides and we just keep going. But if it is, right, let's say we were doing two, um, I don't know, like this example, we just mentioned the, for the four, the two, the, the right here, right? If it, if, it, if it is, well, that would be like the 16. If it is, then we know we need to divide by two again. So we're gonna divide, so then, well, we did divide by two, forgive me. So we know we need to increment our count this time because like, if you think of it abstractly, we haven't divided by two yet. So then we can divide by two, we increment that, that will be another operation that we do. So we increment our count and we reset our max divides and we keep going. And let's say it was odd. Well, if it's odd, the only thing we can do is we can subtract by one. Because as we mentioned, if we were at an odd number, like let's say three, we couldn't have gotten to three by multiplying 1.5 because that's not that's a decimal, right? That's a double. Um, so we had to, the only way we could have gotten from that is if we added one to the, the next even number, which is one, subtra uh, one minus that, which would be two. Um, so then we subtract from n and we just increment count and we keep doing that until we finally hit zero. And then that's it. Then we move on to the next number. And we keep doing that for each number. And eventually, we're going to have an array full of zeros. And then we return our count. And that's basically the final answer. Yes. Just a friendly reminder to like, comment, subscribe. Uh, if it's helped you or not, let me know. If I could improve any way, somehow, what, just let me know. Uh, I'm, I'm one of the reasons I'm doing this is to practice my uh, speaking ability and my communication. So if there's any tips you have on how I can improve that, please do let me know. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit a like if you enjoyed and leave a comment if you didn't. And also hit the dislike if it wasn't a good explanation. Um, but try not to. But yeah.